guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome to the Down Phoenix Show. Today I'd like to talk about the good old PS1, the PlayStation 1. This is a game system that took the world by storm and changed gaming as we knew it, just like Nintendo did back in 1985. But the PlayStation 1 helped build the foundation of gaming as we know it today, with all kinds of advancements from CD-based technology, to having an 8 main button controller, all kinds of things like that came from the original PS1. Dual analog sticks, just so many things to name. There were thousands of games that came out on the PS1, and it's really hard to choose a top 50 on this list. But the thing is, we're not even going to top 50. See, this is a speculation on if Sony released a PlayStation 1 Classic what games I think Sony should put on that system. Um, this would be a variety of games that cover a huge number of genres, uh, games that are really popular and would really drive interest in this type of system. Um, and I decided to narrow it down to just 20. I mean, just imagine how many excellent games there are on the PS1. You can't possibly include every great game on this list. So I decided to set a personal challenge to have only 20 games on this list. So I had to pick the cream of the crop. And I also had to consider various restrictions like licensed music, whether the publishers have rights to those games anymore. Various things like that, of course, to consider. Now, some of these are a little bit toe in the line, I guess you could say. But nonetheless, I think that these restrictions could work out, and these are 20 must-have essential games for a PlayStation 1 Classic. So, I'm going to go ahead and go over my list, but before we start, I do want to say if you want to make a video response to this, feel free to send me a link, and I'll make sure that we add it to a playlist, because I think it'd be really fun to see what everybody's responses are. The only restriction I say is 20 games, and that's it. Okay, if you got, you guys don't have to go by the other restrictions if you don't want to. You can put, you know, a whole bunch of Mega Man and Final Fantasy games and pretty much call it a day, right? But <laughs> uh, seriously, let's get onto my list. Let's go ahead and get things started with my personal favorite genre on the PlayStation 1, RPGs. And you cannot have a PlayStation 1 without Final Fantasy VII. I mean, this was a game that defined RPGs as we know it today. It seemed like every RPG game prior to Final Fantasy VII was a niche title that only hardcore gamers would play. But once this game came out, even the most casual players really sunk their teeth into a deep and rewarding gameplay experience with fantastic visuals for the time, excellent music, memorable characters and just a wonderful storyline with really fun battles to play throughout the whole game not to mention the long and deep length that this game had i mean yes we already have final fantasy 7 remake coming and we also had the re-release on ps4 but some people just want to go back to the classic style so final fantasy 7 is a must-have game for a playstation 1 classic and of course, if we have Final Fantasy VII, we must have Legend of Dragoon. Legend of Dragoon is more or less the best Final Fantasy clone that wasn't a Final Fantasy game on the PlayStation 1. It had a great cast of characters, excellent graphics and animation, huge and epic battles, and just a lot of unique elements to the combat including the ability to use button presses to kind of enhance your attacks, which uh, we have seen technically before in other games like Super Mario RPG. But this game really delivered a full and complete experience and is one of the few games that can rival any Final Fantasy titles on the PS1. So RPG gamers must definitely check this out. And if Sony puts out a PlayStation Classic, this must be on that system. Of course, not all of us are into good old fashioned RPGs. Some of us are bro gamers and want something with a little more bite. 
And for that, we must have Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This is a game that was just mind-blowing for its time. I mean, a lot of gamers back when it first came out didn't really appreciate it because it wasn't a 3D polygonal experience. It was a 2D game that looked a lot like a Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis type game. At least that's what they thought. But the timeless gameplay, the epic level designs, and just the number of hours you can really sink into this game with this complex and deep world was just so much fun to play. So I just cannot see a PlayStation Classic that does not have Castlevania Symphony of the Night on it. And of course, just to help us round off the list for RPGs, as well as transition us into the survival horror games, is good old Parasite Eve. This was a very revolutionary game made from Square Enix that combined these two genres in a very unique way that we rarely have ever seen since. Um, technically, it's not the first survival horror RPG game we've ever gotten, because there was good old Sweet Home, uh, not to mention other games I would imagine, but Parasite Eve was a game that was fondly remembered for its crazy storyline, its high dose of atmosphere, and its excellent graphics and music. I mean, this was a game that people that loved both RPGs and survival horror could really sink their teeth deep into. And sadly, we haven't seen a lot of Parasite Eve love after the PS1, although we did get the third birthday on the PSP, but I heard it's not that great. But the OG is a fantastic game and would definitely be an excellent addition to a PS1 classic. And for the premier survival horror game, I have chosen Resident Evil 2. Because, yes, Resident Evil 1 is fantastic, but we've seen it too many times at other places. And I'm not personally the biggest fan of Silent Hill. I feel that the game kind of is very dated by today's standards. But Resident Evil 2 is still an excellent survival horror game that is just a ton of fun to play still. The game expands greatly on the mechanics that we've seen in the first game, and it just has such larger worlds with a huge variety of enemies to deal with. New weapons, new characters, and just all kinds of great, good, horror fun, just like we got in the first game. Now, some things, of course, are just downright silly, like the puzzles in the police station, of course. But I think we can all forgive that for just the excellent atmosphere, the tension, the music, just everything about Resident Evil 2 is must play. And anybody that grew up with a PlayStation 1 would want this on their PlayStation Classic. And now it's time to take us to a lighthearted type of game genre, the platformer. And this game, of course, needs no introduction. This is Crash Bandicoot Warped, which is quite possibly the best Crash Bandicoot game on PS1. And since Crash Bandicoot was such a popular franchise that was well loved by millions of gamers, it only makes all the sense in the world to include at least one Crash title on this. The reason why I didn't include all three is simply because we've already had the Insane Trilogy, and I figure that they probably want to just pick one title out to throw into the collection. I think Crash Bandicoot Warped makes the best overall case if you were to include just one Crash game on this list. And it's just an excellent and fun time to play. But we of course got to have some other platforming games. And that brings us to Spyro the Dragon. Spyro the Dragon proved to be a true technical masterpiece on the PlayStation 1. It proved that the PlayStation was able to handle huge and complex 3D worlds just like the so-called more powerful Nintendo 64. But on top of that, it managed to give us really addictive collect-a-thon style platforming gameplay with a huge variety of environments to explore, enemies to do battle with, and just a really good time. So if more linear platformers like Crash Bandicoot 
weren't your forte, then you would love Spyro the Dragon. And that's why it's an excellent addition to a PS1 classic. And if you're a PlayStation aficionado, I think you would wholeheartedly agree that we just cannot have a PlayStation 1 classic without Ape Escape. This was a crazy platforming game that had a lot of quirkiness to it, a lot of really interesting designs. Not to mention that this was one of the few PS1 games that not only fully utilized the dual analog controller, but it actually required it. It was a central device that was needed to play this game. And it's really interesting that this game had such a unique control experience back then because if you think about it, how many platform games that are in true 3D nowadays do we have that don't use dual analog controls? And it's just crazy to think that this is kind of where it started in a way for that type of control scheme. Not to mention that we've had a ton of Ape Escape games, so it's a fan favorite, and it just makes a lot of sense to put this on the PlayStation Classic. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines because it's time for Ridge Racer! Ridge Racer, even though it's the only launch title that's gonna be part of this PlayStation 1 Classic, is a defining title that is a must play for PlayStation for a number of reasons. For one, it showed us that this new system was able to bring us arcade quality games. No longer was it just Sega that was able to bring these kinds of games to the home market. Namco did a great job of porting Ridge Racer onto the PlayStation. But not just that, Ridge Racer was also a very entertaining and fun racing game. And who could forget, quite possibly, the greatest loading screen of all time, where you got to play Galaxian while you waited for the game to load. Now, load times, they definitely sucked. That was definitely one thing the N64 had on the PS1. But Namco did a bang-up job in making those as painless as possible with such a creative design on top of just the fact that the game was so much fun to play to begin with. So it was worth the wait even if we didn't have such an awesome loading screen. So Ridge Racer is an essential must-play title for any PlayStation gamers. And that's why I pick it to be on the PS1 Classic. Of course though, not all great arcade racing games were born from the arcades for the PS1. Enter Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. This was a landmark game in the Need for Speed series that helped bring it into the mainstream for racing fans all over the world, becoming one of the top selling racing franchises to ever exist. What made Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit so special was that there was just a large variety of track options that you had, different cars to race in, different tracks, and most importantly, the fun and frantic police chases. This was especially fun when you're playing split screen with a friend because one of you would be running away from the cop and the other one of you would be the cop. And this really made for some tense gameplay moments that were just exciting and fun. And I had many numerous hours playing this with my friends and just having a blast. So, if I personally had a choice on what would be on the PS1 Classic, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit would be on that list. And of course, we wouldn't have a PS1 Classic without at least one entry in the Gran Turismo series. Gran Turismo, it was such a revolutionary game in the racing genre. Every game before it wasn't even close to. This was a game that was so realistic and yet so fun to play. It had excellent controls, excellent graphics, a huge number of tracks and cars. I chose Gran Turismo 2 to be the game to represent the PS1 Classic, not just because we had such a huge variety of tracks and cars to race in, but it just had so much uniqueness to it. You were able to earn money to buy new cars, to upgrade them in all kinds of ways, to tune them to your heart's content. You even had to earn the right to race 
by participating in license tests, which made you really feel empowered whenever you succeeded. Gran Turismo 2 would be essential for the PS1 Classic. Now it's time to no longer be Mr. Nice Guy. It is time to take our aggression out on something because we had a really bad day, you know. And what game on the PS1 is better to take out our frustration on than Twisted Metal 2? One of the most brutal and fun car combat games to ever exist. I mean, this was a game that basically made the genre. Twisted Metal 2 pulled out all the stops. We had such a brilliant design in the level structure. We had all kinds of crazy vehicles. We had a really interesting storyline with neat comic book style animation. And we also had a two player split screen multiplayer mode where you can team up together to go through the story or you can pit against each other to see who is the ultimate warrior in the Twisted Metal arena. And you know what, folks? I want a fair share of my matches. Mr. Grimm is my main in Twisted Metal 2, and I just love this game so much, I just can't imagine it not being in the PS1 Classic. Now that brings us to the definitive fighting game on the PlayStation 1. That is, of course, Tekken 3. Tekken 3 built on the foundation established by the first two Tekken games and really upped the ante. This game was untouched in the fighting genre basically until we got to the Dreamcast. With just a huge variety of characters, tons of moves, great levels, an excellent storyline that had everybody represented in the story, and just so much more. You even had a really fun beat-em-up mode. I mean, this game had it all, and I spent so many hours playing this with my friend, learning all the moves, picking out characters that I wanted to master, just so many things. Tekken 3 is a fighting game for everybody. Whether you're a hardcore fighting game fan, or you're just someone that likes to play them on occasion, Tekken 3 will scratch that itch and must be on the PS1 Classic. But of course, let's not forget the classic 2D fighters that really made PlayStation great. And we've got to have something that represents those. Enter Capcom's Street Fighter Alpha 3, most likely the definitive version of Street Fighter available on PlayStation. This game had excellent animation, a huge roster of characters, tons of really fun moves to pull off, and a multiplayer mode that is just great to play. Although it's not my personal favorite, I do choose Tekken 3 over it. I just really want to see some more fighting game love on the PS1, and Street Fighter Alpha 3 will definitely fit that bill. Now it's time to stop fighting, and time to start being sneaky, because the PS1 had one of the best stealth games to ever exist, and that game of course is Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid is not only a fantastic stealth game, but it's also a game that has a immersive and expansive storyline with some really interesting characters, huge environments to explore, and cinematic camera angles that we haven't really seen in games before at that time. And this game utilized all these to the fullest potential and ended up being one of the biggest technical achievements for the PS1. Metal Gear Solid is a game that simply cannot be ignored, and you must have this on a PS1 classic. Now if you didn't want to be so sneaky and methodical, don't forget to check out Siphon Filter. This is a top-notch third-person action game available for the PS1, and this game definitely gives players a lot of fun gun-toting action. You have a great lock-on system that you can utilize, just all kinds of different weapons, different environments that you can run through, and it's just a blast to play. Of course, there's a few different siphon filter games that we've had on the PS1, but I think that the best place to start is from the beginning. So if we brought a siphon filter game to PS1 Classic, let's make it the first one, guys. And of course, few games define the PlayStation more than the Tomb Raider franchise. Specifically, Tomb Raider 2, which is 
probably the most popular game in the series. Tomb Raider 2 really expanded upon the first game, giving us better graphics, bigger environments, a greater variety in those environments, all kinds of new weapons and gear to use, and so much more. We did have some other Tomb Raider games, of course, on the PS1 after this, but it seemed that Tomb Raider 2 is the one that stands out the most to so many people. I mean, how many times have I heard stories about people trying to put the butler in the freezer, for example? There's just so many things to do in this game, and it's amazing considering how old it is. This game's been around for over 20 years, and people still have very fond memories of it. So it just makes sense to put this on the PS1 Classic. PlayStation plays host to numerous great first-person shooters from that early era, but one that certainly is a standout amongst these is the Medal of Honor games. Most notably, Medal of Honor Underground. This was a game that took all the great principles that we saw in the first game and it built upon them in a great way. Now, by today's standards, this game may seem really antiquated and hard to play, but if you were somebody that grew up with these games back then, you'll have a blast playing this game. There's a lot of great stages to run through, different weapons to utilize, and so much that you can take advantage of. If you want a trip down memory lane of great first-person shooters from back in the day, Medal of Honor Underground would be great to have on the PS1 Classic. And to wrap things up on the PS1 Classic, let's bring two action-adventure games to the mix. Let's start things off with Medieval, which was a fun and fantastic action platforming game brought to us by Sony. This game featured a really fun and whimsical character as our main hero. It had great level design, great graphics, and a really good score. Also, the action gameplay was just really good for its time. I mean, it's a little dated by today's standards, I suppose, but this is one that I think PlayStation gamers will fondly remember. And this game also pays homage to a lot of the old school games like Ghouls and Ghosts, but does so in a much more accessible way. That being said, it's still quite a challenge to play. And I think we would be totally amiss if we did not have this game on the PS1 Classic. And to wrap things up, let's bring Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver to the system. This is a game that was just mind-blowing for its time. It was such a great technical achievement for the PS1, since it featured huge level environments that had barely any loading whatsoever. Great graphics, a fantastic score, and excellent gameplay all around. This was a game that helped inspire some of my recent favorites like Darksiders, and so I think this game would be an excellent addition to the PS1 Classic. I just couldn't imagine not having this game, and Square Enix, how about a new Legacy of Kane game? I think it's been long enough, and I think people want an actual game, not a multiplayer-focused shooter. Well, let's drop the tangent, and let's talk about five games that I really wanted to add on the PS1 Classic. The most obvious, of course, would be Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This was one of the best games to ever release for the PS1. It was just a blast to play, but all that licensed music as well as the license rights to Tony Hawk's being in jeopardy, I just couldn't see it happen. Also from Activision, Nightmare Creatures, which was a fun and fantastic gothic action game. However, Activision no longer holds the rights to this game, and the new company, Albino Moose Studios, probably doesn't have the ability to publish a PS1 version for the game. Then there's good old Bushido Blade, which was a fun and fantastic fighting game, unlike anything else we've ever seen. However, I just can't see this game coming to the PS1 Classic due to how niche the game is. Then of course we have Crash Team Racing, which is a really fun racing game that challenges Mario Kart quite well. However, I can't see them putting this over a mainland Crash Bandicoot title on the PS1 Classic. And finally, there is quite possibly my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy Tactics, which is just an excellent strategy RPG game that completely changed the way that I look at these kinds of games. However, I have to take my personal biases aside because this game is probably just not going to be enough of a draw 
on the PS1 Classic. So that was my video for 20 games I think should be on the PS1 Classic. Don't forget to leave your response in the comments or make a video response. And thank you for tuning in. But till then, Down Phoenix out.